In an unexpected move yesterday, the government prorogued the 10th session of the House of Representatives that was supposed to finalize the impeachment motion against Chief Justice Rana and the fate of 57 other bills. The constitutional experts have played the government decision, citing that the decision could have been delayed until the motion was forwarded to the impeachment recommendation panel, which now has been denied the opportunity to even study the case. Good morning, I am Bipash Nathamang and these are the headlines of the hour. The government prorogues the 10th session of the House of Representatives. Impeachment process against CJ Rana stalled, at least 57 bills stranded. Development expenditure barely reaches 20% in eight months of the current fiscal year. Ministries continue to struggle in implementing the projects. The U.S. president to visit Europe next week to discuss Ukraine crisis with NATO allies as the refugee tally hit 3 million amid more Russian airstrikes. And Athletic Madrid edge past Manchester United 2-1 on aggregate to book a place in the Champions League last eight. Benfica also threw. The 10th session of the House of Representatives has been unexpectedly prorogued. The 10th session of the House, which could not function smoothly even on a single day amid the obstructions from the main opposition CPNUML, was ended yesterday by President Bidya Devi Bhandari upon the recommendation of the Deoba cabinet. Minister for Education Devendra Podil informed that the House session was prorogued due to the ongoing obstruction by the main opposition as well as the need for the lawmakers to reach their constituencies due to approaching elections. The highlight of the 10th session was the endorsing of the much debated MC Sinapal Compact and the impeachment motion registered against Chief Justice Cholendra Shamsharana. With the ending of the House session, the impeachment motion against Chief Justice Rana has been stranded. As per the parliamentary norms, the impeachment recommendation committee is required to present its report within three months since the beginning of the impeachment process. However, the impeachment process has been stalled as not even a single discussion has taken place on the agenda. As the House has been prorogued, the next session will first hold deliberations before sending it to the Recommendation Committee. Likewise, the budget session needs to begin at least a month prior to budget announcement on 29th of May. The 11th session could start by the end of April. The scenario indicates towards considerable delay in the impeachment process. There are at least 57 bills stranded at the House due to the continuous obstruction of the Parliament by the main opposition. As the May 13 elections near parties have prioritized a review on their performance in the past five years and on monitoring its position among the public in current scenario. Likewise, parties have been identifying constituencies where they can contest and win while standing alone and those where they need to forge an alliance. Parties have begun taking feedbacks from voters at local levels. The Party Congress of the Ruling Alliance has recruited its central representatives to monitor the voters' response towards the party ahead of the polls. The party intends to reach a decision on whether it wants to continue with the Ruling Alliance or stand in the elections as an independent party after it evaluates voters' response. Main opposition CPNUML, meanwhile, is putting all efforts to ensure the ruling alliance does not continue till the elections. CPN Unified Socialist, meanwhile, has been looking to solidify the alliance. Other coalition partner Janata Samajwadi has kicked off campaign to solidify its hold of Tarai Madhesh. Bauer Centre too has been evaluating its position at the local levels. Likewise, Loktantrik Samajwadi. Rashtriya Prasadantra Party, Rashtriya Jana Morcha, among others, too, have been active in forging strategies for the polls. The Ministry of Sports has spent barely 3% of development budget in eight months, while the situation is similar with other ministries as well. The government has not made any significant achievements in the eight months of the ongoing fiscal year. The overall development expenditure stands at a paltry 20%. More in this report. 
The development expenditure of the National Pride Budi Gandaki project stands at only 2% in the eight months of the ongoing fiscal year. The physical progress of Melamchi Drinking Water Project is less than 13%. Indifference of the Ministries of Energy and Drinking Water is the main reason for the delay in these projects. Most National Pride projects have not made expected progress because of the failure of related ministries. The Ministry of Sports had received 537 million 700,000 rupees for development, but it has spent only 3% of it at 16 million 300,000. The Ministry of Agriculture has spent only 16% of its development budget, while similar expenditure of drinking water stands at 17%, and that of labor and employment is at 20%. The most concerning aspect is that the portfolio assigned with the major responsibility of development, the Ministry of Physical Infrastructure, has spent less than 22%. The Ministry of Energy and that of Defence have spent 22% each, while the Office of the Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers has spent 27% of the allocated development budget. In such a situation, possibilities of spending around 80% in the remaining four months of the fiscal appear dismal. In our Public Voice segment, we had asked locals in several provinces how aware are they while purchasing goods and services. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public Voice <laughs> Time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. And here's the question, what do you term the government failure in spending the allocated budget? The options option A, ignoring development, option B, administrative lapses and option C, lack of monitoring. The voting is on, type any WS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And time now for the sports update. Sports News. Spanish champions Atletico Madrid have advanced to the quarterfinals of the UEFA Champions League with an aggregate 2-1 win over Manchester United. The first leg at Atletico's home ground had ended in a one-all stalemate. The second leg at Old Trafford saw Atletico Madrid edge past Manchester United 1-0. The 41st minute header by Renan Lodi was enough to propel Diego Sima one side into the Champions League last eight. Atletico resorted to defensive strategy to second half to stop the Manchester United attack led by star players Cristiano Ronaldo and Edison Cavani. With this, Manchester United's chances to winning any major tournament this season has ended while it is struggling for a top four finish at the ongoing Premier League. Meanwhile, Benfica defeated Ajax 3-2 on aggregated to advance to the Champions League last eight. Team Nepal is taking on Papua New Guinea under World Cup League later today. The match at Sarja Stadium is scheduled for 11.15 a.m. kickoff Nepal time. Prior to this, the two sides had met in UAE last year during a one-day series which Nepal had clean swept. PNG are going through a lean run, having lost all of the 13 matches they have played, while Nepal have registered four wins out of eight matches they have featured. Team Nepal, under the captaincy of Sandeep Lamichane, is therefore expected to chalk out a comfortable victory considering the poor form of PNG. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.